New live stream. Where are you? New live stream. Where are you? All right, Melissa, almost live. Great. Joe Glickman, God bless you, my brother. Hey, I, it was really nice. Your friend that came, uh, the chaplain, uh, Raymond. What a, what a nice man he was, and, and thank you so much for helping us out on that coffee. And uh, wow. So he spends about four months a year up there, up there in uh, Montana. Nice guy. Serge, Rita, and Dorothy, Tony. Yeah, Ray, you call him Ray. Or you can call him Jay. Or you can call him Say. Or you can say just May. But yeah, Raymond's a great guy. He really was. Praise God for him. All right, hang on a second, everybody. Where am I at here? Let's get Block Talk Radio connected. Let's get everybody connected. Your show is scheduled to start in 9 minutes, 16 seconds. Nine minutes until showtime. All right, Worldwide Network should be connecting as well. And other uh, websites streaming along with us today, praise God. We got nine minutes, is that what's, that, what's going on here? Let's adjust this. It is good to be back home in Indiana. Although, what a shocker to go from sunny Southern California to Arctic Blast. Are you serious? Eight minutes. Eight. Minutes until showtime. There we go. Now we got it set right. Preacher friend of mine just sent me an e a text, holding a cup of coffee, smiling. He's a character, though. He is a character. Let's get ready to rumble. Robo Mom is in the house. Great to meet you, Robo Mom. You Seven and your husband. Until Wonderful time. people. Uh, just God bless you. And all the folks we met out there in California Saturday, 40 people showed up for a coffee with Heidi and I. That was just incredible. I'm still moved by that. I really am. Everybody, first time to meet all of them. And I felt like I knew everybody, like I've been, I've been, I just, it was amazing. Well, I've been praying for some of them, though I had no idea that they're out there watching. Matter of fact, a lot of them. About 30 of them were brand new to me. It's really cool. Miss ZD, how's the weather in Chicago land? Mary, how's the weather in New York? Rita, how's the weather in Louisiana? That's where I should be going, the south. What? <clears throat> Sherry Howard, how are you doing? Over in Indianapolis. I know how you're doing. It's cold.
Pittsburgh has snow as well. I see that. Yeah, stormy weather. Amy, you're right. I actually talked about that Sunday. <clears throat> stormy weather in Israel. Kathy and David, good to see you. Juan Pizarro, good to see you. Veronica, how are you? Frankie and PA, Phil and NASCAR, Beauty for Ashes, Larry in West Virginia. The Dow is still falling. I'm going to talk about that today, Larry. I've actually got it right here in my list of things to talk. Oh, Heidi's getting love notes while we're on the road. She keeps getting mysterious secret admirers. These guys. What? What? It was in her luggage when we got home. It was in her luggage when we got home. They went through Heidi's luggage, both of her bags. Plus, they pulled her aside and gave her the interrogation. But Pastor Begley, I went sliding right through. Are you serious? I'm sorry, Heidi. I really am. But Heidi does have a secret admirer. She does have hidden love notes in her travel bag from the T-S-A. They didn't steal anything this time, and they didn't tear up her bag. But they, uh, they didn't repack it for her. What? Just saying. Sister Brandy, blessings to you as well. Carrie of Washington State, God bless you as well. I hear Washington State folks, we're going to talk about it, stream weather out there. If I would have been home, I would have had YouTube videos about it. Um, stream weather in Washington State right now. Rain, flooding, landslides, rock falling, just some crazy stuff going on. Dead birds all along the coast of Washington State and Northern California for that matter. Yeah, probably. <laughs> Bird's Eye, how are you doing? Deborah Bass, are you serious? Good to see you. We're going to talk about the two cops that were shot in the Bronx, New York. I have that right here on my stack to talk about. Of course, we'll be at the, we'll, Lord willing, we'll be in the Bronx preaching in 12 days. May revival come to the Bronx. May a peace come. Ida Biddle, good to see you. Michelle, good to see you. Brush Handle, great to see you. Now, I haven't had a chance to check the mail, so just to let you know that when I get off the air, I actually got to go to the post office, pick up all the mail since we've been gone. So if you send a card or something, I'll know more about that later this afternoon. We're about three minutes away, guys. We're going to get this broadcast started. We've only got an hour and a half today. Wow, Heidi, are you are you in the chat room? You know what, if, sweetheart, if you just make a fresh pot of coffee and bring me a cup, It'd be an awesome thing to do. Are you listening? Two minutes until showtime. Are you listening, Heidi? Okay. You can do. God bless. I normally don't do that. I'm almost, I'm almost, I'm down to like two cups a day. Um, it's crazy. I don't want to completely quit drinking coffee. But I, I needed to cut back. But this afternoon, I really want a cup of coffee. Too. It's cold out. It's, I need to have a fresh cup of coffee right now. It would be great. Would it? Yep, Heidi's going to make a fresh pot. That's great. Let's get ready to rumble. I see Stacy's here. Sheepar's here. Red Whiskers in the house. Molly's here. Oh, yes. Nick Danger in Austin. DW's here. Chris J is here. Hazel Blue in the house. I need healings here. Mary of New York's here. TK Kit Kat, TX Texas Cat is here. One minute. The Honduras, Debbie from Honduras is here. The Blessed One is in the building. 
Reverend Gary's here. Sarah Salmon's here. Christine Marin. Christine is here. Adam Stark is here. D. Snyder's in the house. Adoptable Josie. Karen's here. Liza from Belgium. No wonders here today. Everybody's gathering again, even though we're late, even though the time is messed up, even though it's a complete chaotic situation. Stephanie of California is here. We're back home in Indiana. Let's get ready to rumble. Something biblical is going on with the signs of the second Your coming show will of go live Christ. In five seconds. Four, three, two, one. What? Love Talk Radio. I... The coming apocalypse. Let's calm down, everybody. Calm down. Everything's fine. And fun. as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming, and of the end of the world? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive and many. And for my Latino and friends. ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye not be troubled, for all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in divers places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Welcome to the coming apocalypse, analysis of today's headlines, and how Bible prophecy is unfolding before your very eye. Please welcome now your host, Pastor Paul Bigley. Well, it is really great to be back home in Indiana. Thank you so much for your prayers. We had a wonderful time visiting our family in California. We really did. And uh, um, my son and his wife are a very creative young couple. Uh, they've got a baby on the way. And uh, uh, he's a petty officer, third class. She's a petty officer, second class, so she outranks him. And it's and she definitely bosses him around. That's no question about that. So she's setting the she's setting the pace early on how this uh, marriage is going to work, and it it's it's destined uh, based on my uh, expert um, research. The fact that I've been married thirty two years and my wife uh, truly is in control of this whole situation. He's in for a long term marriage as long as she's leading the way, telling us what to do, how high to jump. And all that. Guys, that's all you got to do. All right? Let the lady lead. That's all you got to do. Let her lead. And it'll work out just great. Okay? Can anybody say amen? Oh, praise God. Hey, you know something, folks? Heidi's got love notes. <clears throat> well, they call it puppy love. Yes, she's got some secret admirers going through her luggage. The TSA has left Heidi a special love note, notice of baggage inspection. Yes, she is upset, but as she was unpacking this afternoon, she said all of her belongings had been repacked, and this little love note was in there to let her know that the TSA had been there. Also, she was the one that was pulled aside by the TSA on this trip. I was not. They never they never bothered me. They waved me. They didn't even make me take my computers or nothing out of the, the bag. I mean, it was insane. I uh, just, it was like they rolled out the red carpet. But Heidi was pulled aside. They ran through her stuff, interrogation. But part of the reason she went through all this interrogation was because we had, we had my books, some of my books in one case, and they thought they were blocks of cheese. And they, they, and so they pulled her aside and they unzipped the bag and pulled out all my books. They said it looked like on the scanner blocks of cheese. All right. So anyway, um, uh, anyway, we got through it just fine. Uh, we want to thank you guys. Our planes were delayed twice on the way home, so we did not touch down till uh, five minutes to midnight. 
uh, last night in Indianapolis. Um, and so, and it was snowing. It was a blizzard. So we decided to stay till daylight this morning and get up and head home, only to find that we were driving in a very, very snowy situation and very slick roads that actually became as slick as ice, like glass. Uh, and we did a video, actually, as we were out on the interstate, just letting everybody know we're on our way home. Pray for us that we have a safe journey. I always say, Lord willing, we'll be uh, home. Well, about a half hour later or so, as I was driving and come up over a hill on the interstate, just as I topped the hill, down below I could see four crashes, people rear-ending each other, a semi that had uh, crashed into a car, another car over on the other side in the ditch, and, and, I, and so I hit my brakes. You know, and when you drive in snow and ice, guys, you don't just lock things up. You, you tap. You tap your brakes. As soon as I tapped my brakes, there was no stopping. I was, I was already in a slide. It was pure ice. And um, so then I start tapping, 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 trying to get control of my own car, not wanting to get involved in the pile up at the bottom. And after about a third or fourth pump, I did finally grab traction. At that moment that I was back in control of the car, I looked in the rearview mirror, and just topping the top of the hill was a semi and he minute he topped the hill, he knew he was in trouble. He was going too fast. He hit his brakes. He jackknifed. And so he's sliding sideways, coming down the hill toward us, completely jackknifed. The rear end was all completely swung around and was in front, almost in front of his cab. So at that point, I'm thinking, he's going to hit us. So I started looking for where to go. And I had two options. One was take the ditch to the right. The other was try to sneak in between two car accidents and kind of sandwich myself in the middle and hope that that sheltered me, which is, uh, I was actually considering that one. when and, and immediately when I saw him jackknife, I just said, oh, Lord, help us, Jesus. That's the only thing I could get out was, Lord, help us, Jesus. And all of a sudden, his semi just stopped sliding, and it was like it went into forward. He just drove right over the hill, way down into the valley. But he never flipped it. He never flipped his truck. I mean, I don't know how in the world he didn't flip his truck. So he never hit anybody, and he never lost his load. He never flipped the truck. He'll just have to get towed back up onto the main road, and uh, but without any injury or damage. And we didn't hit anybody as we came to the bottom of the hill. We were able to maneuver through it, and God took care of us as well. So anyway, Heidi grabbed the camera and did a quick video. Our hearts were racing. And um, But the Lord had uh, spared us and the truck driver behind us. And we praise the Lord for that. Lord, help us, Jesus. I think I remember a song like that. Lord, help me, Jesus. I've wasted it so. Help me, Jesus. I know what I am. Oh, yes. But now that I know that I needed you. So help me, Jesus, my soul's in your hand. Jesus, my soul's in your hand. Oh, yes, 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 yes. I feel the vocal cords saying it's almost time to praise the Lord. Can somebody shout with me? Guys, let's get right into the current world events. I'm just happy to be home and get comfortable again, get all my computer things going and start printing my stuff. It's just easier to operate from here as far as broadcasting. Wow, did we enjoy, though, the visit, not only with our son and daughter-in-law, but boy, did we. And he took us, oh, my son says, hey, because every day he made us do something different, all right? His wife actually was coordinating everything, so they would come pick us up. That way we didn't have to rent a car that way. They could just come pick us up. And they took us to the Midway one day, so they said, look, you're going to tour the Midway. We went inside the Midway and walked all around it. That was very historical, and that was very powerful. I mean, you see just how the sailors uh, spend their time on that boat and, and just how, you know, the, the flight deck. And just an incredible, incredible thing. I just can't, I, I totally appreciate every veteran out there that we're on, you know, all of our midshipmen, all of our uh, Navy sailors, and all of our air force men that would fly these planes in and off those uh, ships and everybody involved. I mean, it was just a, 
uh, unbelievable thing how tiny it is to get in and out of the in their sleeping quarters and we went down into the hospital area where my son Paul would have, would be working if he was on a ship and uh, just looked at all over had a great time it was a good time and then actually the other day he took us he said okay we're going out to see see if we can see a whale so they put us on a boat and they took us way out into the ocean, and we the Lord blessed us to see several whales, and I actually got some footage of two whales doing what looked like synchronized swimming, all right? So I had to upload that for you. I thought that was beautiful. It was beautiful. And then we ran into a bunch of dolphins trying to catch the boat, and about 25 dolphins or so, you know, racing to catch us, and we put a video up on that, too. That was another beautiful sight. So anyway... Um, I actually think I did a better job with those videos than National Geographic Wild. No pun intended with them. Uh, let's move on with some of the things going on right now. I, I tell you right now, uh, let's grab the word of the Lord if I can. I'm not going to use Max since I just don't feel like pulling it up and getting it all ready. But I would like to read from the word of the Lord. Everybody grab your Bible and go to Psalms. Let's go quickly to Psalms 133. This will be one of the themes of the whole year. And I seen it in action Saturday afternoon at that coffee when 40 people who had never met us in their life, most of whom I did not, had never heard of, uh, probably out of the 40, I would say 30 of them was the first time I ever heard of the people. Uh, they were faithful watchers, uh, faithful they watch all our YouTube videos. They come and watch these live broadcasts, but never get into the chat room. Uh, just want to watch. Just watch the videos. Listen, they, some, some of them only listen to the archives because of their work schedule. They love the archives. Uh, just amazing. From all walks of life, they drove in from everywhere, all over San Diego. They came in out of uh, Los Angeles. They came in out of uh, north of Los Angeles, they came in from La Mirada, California, they, they, just Long Beach, California, uh, just everywhere. Uh, it was just incredible. 40 for a, for a coffee, and um, we just about took over the Cheesecake Factory almost. Uh, there was one, uh, one guy, uh, and one, one man, the, one man never got to even have coffee. He just double parked in the highway. He saw us standing out in front of the Cheesecake Factory. He stopped in the middle of the road, jumped out of his car, and ran up to the, just to uh, give us a hug and hand us two beautiful pictures that he had taken in frames and said, I love you, brother, and ran back and jumped in his car and he was gone. And there was another man who was sitting inside the Cheesecake Factory waiting on a table did not even know that this event was scheduled and uh, saw me walk in and said, what, you know, are you serious? So he came around to just to introduce himself, say, hey, I watch you all the time. I, you know what? And then I said, well, come on, we're having a get together. So he ended up joining us and we had a, <laughs> and he owns an Italian restaurant there in San Diego or north of San Diego. So we plan on visiting that next time. So anyway, just a lot of wonderful people all over the place. Can we read the word? 133, Psalms 133. Behold, behold, how good and how pleasant it is for the brethren and sistren, if you want to say that, because that's what it means, how good and how pleasant it is for the brethren to dwell together in unity. It is like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down upon the beard, even Aaron's beard, that went down to the skirts of his garments as the dew of Hermon and as the dew that descended upon the mountains of Zion. For there the Lord commanded the blessing, even life forevermore. If you walk in unity, if you stay in unity with your brethren and sisters of the Lord, you will receive, it's so precious to God. It's as, it's as precious as the anointing oil upon the high priest of Aaron, flowing down his beard to the skirts of his priestly garment. It's that precious. Matter of fact, it's as precious as the dew 
on Mount Hermon, on the mountains of Zion. Matter of fact, it is so precious that God will command a blessing upon you. I've had people say, Pastor, I really want to grow in the Lord. I want to be blessed. How do I get blessed? Start walking in love. Start walking in unity. Start walking in fellowship with your brothers and sisters. Uh, understand your responsibility as a born-again believer. You don't always have to be right. You don't always have to set the record straight. You don't always have to judge somebody. You don't always have to be uh, in position of critical uh, uh, acclamation. What you really need to do is walk in the love and the joy and the peace and the power and the presence of the Lord and to walk and live and shine a light to a lost and dying world and love your neighbor as yourself. Come on, love the Lord with all your heart, your soul, your strength and mind and love your neighbor as yourself. I'm telling you right now, you do these things, you will be blessed. Can somebody say amen? Uh, let's go on. Psalms 134. Behold, bless ye the Lord, all ye servants of the Lord, which by night stand in the house of the Lord. Lift up your hands in the sanctuary and bless the Lord. The Lord hath made heaven and earth. Bless thee out of Zion. Go to Psalms 135. Bless ye the Lord. Or praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the name of the Lord. Praise him, all ye servants of the Lord, ye that stand in the house of the Lord and in the courts of the house of our God. Praise the Lord, for the Lord is good. Sing praises unto his name, for it is pleasant. For the Lord hath chosen Jacob unto himself and Israel for his particular treasure. Mm, mm. Someone said, well, I'm not so sure God's really... We don't have to worry about Israel anymore, the land of Israel. It's a particular treasure. <laughs> what? Wait a minute. And for I know that the Lord is great and that our Lord is above all gods. Whatsoever the Lord pleased, that did he in the heaven and in the earth and in the seas and all deep places. He causes the vapors to ascend from the ends of the earth. He maketh lightnings for the rain. He bringeth the wind out of his treasuries. Who smote the firstborn of Egypt, both of man and beast. Who sent tokens and wonders into the midst of the O Egypt, upon Pharaoh and upon all his servants. Who smote great nations and slew mighty kings. Sihon, king of the Amorites. Og, king of the Bashan. And all the kingdoms of Canaan. And gave their land for a heritage a heritage unto Israel, his people. Thy name, O Lord, endureth forever, and thy memorial, O Lord, throughout all generations. For the Lord will judge his people. He will repent himself concerning his servants. The idols of the heathen are silver and gold and the work of men's hand, man's hands. They have mouths, but they speak not. Eyes, have they, but they see not. They have ears, but they hear not. Neither is there any breath in their mouths. They that make them are like unto them. So it is every one that trusts in them. Nothing, in other words, dead. Bless the Lord, O Israel. Bless the Lord, O house of Aaron. Bless the Lord, O house of Levi. Ye that fear the Lord, bless the Lord. Blessed be the Lord out of Zion, which dwelleth at Jerusalem. Praise ye the Lord. Wow, I'm telling you what's the truth. I'm excited uh, what God is doing. I love the word of the Lord, don't you? God is so good. He is so, so good. All right, folks. Uh, oh, is, the, is the coffee here? So, Heidi, what do you think about the... TSA and their and their love notes. Yeah, I feel like I'm being stalked. Uh oh, <laughs> I've had that feeling a couple times. <laughs> hey, uh, you know something though? Uh, they're, 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 at least they didn't tear up your bag. No, everything was. They didn't good, break anything. As far as I can tell. Didn't steal anything. As far as I can tell. Uh, okay. <laughs> I'm just intrigued oh, with. Me, are you serious? Are you serious? That coffee's delicious. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. 
Thank you, Heidi. All right. My peace is Jesus sent this to me, a second blast of bitter, cold uh, air has struck America again, folks, causing all kinds of havoc, bitter cold air, but snow, sleet, rain, freezing rain, ice, as I was just telling you, uh, accidents everywhere this morning on the uh, interstate I-65 between Indianapolis and Lafayette, Indiana. We were so blessed that that semi-trailer coming over top that hill and uh, he lost complete control, completely jackknifed, coming toward us. Oh my, all I could do was pray. Help us, Jesus. Lord, help us, Jesus. That's all I could do. And the Lord did by taking the truck over the hill off the road without hitting anybody and without flipping the truck. Uh, just, I, I, you know what, are you serious? God is just amazing. <clears throat> God is truly amazing. And the blood of Jesus, and that's why you ask people to pray for us. You know, anytime any of you travel and you say, hey, pray for us, we're traveling. Folks, it's important. Pray a little prayer. Say, Father, watch over them, bless them. I, I plead the blood of Jesus over. Because, you know, the devil, he's like a roaring lion, folks. He's seeking who he can devour in any way possible. Can you say amen? Got a great crowd of folks here at Old Livestream and <clears throat> and Paul Begley Prophecy and New Livestream. Great turnout, even though we're late in total different time. And Blog Talk Radio folks also getting in there. Of course, they didn't get notified as well because they're they're listening on cell phones generally. But still, good crowd there as well. Uh, let me move on here to some things going on. Reverend Gary sent this to me. Folks, as we've said, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 26, the Lord said, I'm going to shake the earth and the heavens also. Uh, well, there was an earthquake early this morning. Christ Church, New Zealand, a very powerful 6.0 earthquake that jolted and awoken the people early this morning right near Christ Church. They felt it in Christ Church, New Zealand. It actually, the epicenter was actually a place called Arthur's Pass. It was a 6.0 magnitude earthquake <clears throat> at 7 a.m. local time there in New Zealand. Um, now remember, three years ago, uh, in 2011, the same year that Japan had that horrific earthquake and tsunami, um, it was Christ Church, New Zealand that was hit with a very powerful quake that killed 185 people. And uh, we covered that back then. And uh, certainly I feel that anytime you see Christ Church New Zealand having earthquakes, it is so symbolic to me, so, so prophetic to me that God said he was going to shake the church. Do you remember what the Lord gave in the 15 points, the prophetic look for the year 2015? The Lord specifically said to me, I am going to shake the earth and the heavens and the spirituality of the church. And that was specifically a very, very important point for the prophetic year uh, as one of the points. I really, 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 uh, and it was confirmed by Shannon Johnson, who sat down to read a word that he had received from the Lord. In California, as he sat down, turned on his camera, had the Da Vinci painting of the Last Supper behind him, he started to read Hebrews 12, 26, where the Lord said, "I have will, my voice of the Lord will shake the, the earth and the heavens also. And as he started to read it, an earthquake, a 4.0 earthquake came and shook right where he's at and shook the picture on the back of the wall and startled him. He knew it was an earthquake. He said, bear with me, we're having an earthquake. And he went on to read that uh, word that he was given from the Lord. There's no question that the Lord <clears throat> is speaking to the body of Christ. And whatever's going on in the spiritual world will manifest in the physical. So when the Lord really impressed upon me that he was going to shake the earth, shake the heavens, don't forget that, and shake the spirituality of the church, when this earthquake this morning, January 6th, shook up 
Christ Church New Zealand. I truly believe that is a sign of what he's about to do with the church. And it's and, and, and he's going to shake it. And really what the Lord uh, impressed upon me, anything that wasn't of God would be shaken loose. Anything that's really not of God. So a lot of this stuff that's being uh, uh, packaged in and with what's supposed to be the gospel is going to get shook loose. Anything that's uh, that's not of the Lord, if it's temporal or it's man-made, even if it's a, 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 a good ideal, you know, one thing can be, you know, this is okay, but we want to be in the perfect will of God. We want to, we want to walk in the anointing. We want to walk in the acceptable will of God. We want to walk in the perfect will of God. That don't mean we're perfect, but it means we are walking in his will. We might stumble individually. We might stub our toe. We may sin. We may need forgiveness. We may repent. We may even rededicate. We may even have to get some things right with God, but we still are walking in his grace. We're still walking in his mercy, and we're still trying to walk in his favor, and we do it by walking in the perfect will of God. So can somebody understand what I'm trying to preach to you here is that you're, you're saved by grace through faith. It's not in yourselves. It's a gift of God, not of works, least any man should boast. Yet uh, no man can pluck you out of the hand of God, all right? But you can go into a far journey if you want to. You can go hang out in the hog pen if you want to. You can cast your pearls before the swine if you want to. You, you can take a left turn and wind up in a, in a bad situation if you want to. God will never change your will. He'll only give you opportunities to choose which road you want to follow. I feel like preaching right now. Paul said you can't eat off the Lord's table and the table of devils. What? I mean, you can't, uh, <laughs> all right? You can't serve God and mammon. What? You're going to have to choose this day whom you'll serve. Joshua said, as for me in my house, that he said, I, the Lord said, I set good and evil before you. Choose this day whom you'll serve. And Joshua said, as for me in my house, we're going to serve the Lord. We choose to serve the Lord. All right. Can somebody say amen? So, I mean, there, you have to, you're going to have to do something about this thing a little bit. It isn't all about just coasting along. You've got something to do. You've got to persevere. You've got to run this race with patience. You've got to put on the whole armor of God. You've got to get up and get your devotion life started. You're the one that's got to do some praying and that without ceasing. It's time some point, at some point in time, I, I, had, I was telling Heidi, I got a word from the Lord the other day. Uh, somebody, was, uh, somebody was saying, I just don't believe women should get involved in the work of God. I think they should just stay quiet and, you know, cook, bake cookies at home. Well, they can bake the cookies, but why are you trying to shut them down for? I mean, think about it. Uh, who, who was it that carried the word in her belly for nine months? What you talking about? You ain't never carried the, the word of God in your belly nine months. You won't even carry your Bible to church. Somebody help me. I, I don't want to I don't want to get started right here. I mean, and guess who the Lord trusted to deliver the word? Huh? What? And whenever Jesus died on the cross, all the disciples had already fled, but Mary and the other women were still at the foot of the cross. They didn't forsake the word either in times of great persecution and peril. And oh, by the way, when the Lord rose from the dead, guess who ran with the word of the resurrection first? It was Mary and the women. Well, I just want to throw that out there for you just to kind of help you understand that God's got a plan for everybody if everybody just opened their eyes and clean out the spiritual earwax that's uh, blocking their ability to hear the word. Yet at the same time, ladies, God did establish a wonderful structure for the head of the church, for the head of the family, for your covering being your husband. He put it together for you. This thing is easy, guys. Every one of us, if we just walk in the word of the Lord, and oh, by the way, uh, husbands, you should love your wife, even as Christ loved the church and gave his life for it. For it is the bride. She is your bride. So, you know, it's one thing to say you're going to be in charge. Another thing to be to understand the responsibility of that. Is anybody going to help me today? I don't know why I'm on this. My Lord have mercy. I'm preaching on the earthquake. 
on a Christ church. It's because this stuff that isn't of truth is going to get shook loose. I'm telling you that the stuff that's just, uh, uh, it's traditions, it's, uh, it's, it's uh, ordinances and traditions and doctrinal things that men cling to. Some folks believe their doctrine more than they believe the Bible. I'm telling you, anything that's not of the truth is going to get shook loose. All right, you're going to be like Elvis. You're going to be all shook up. It's time that the church receives an awakening. It's time that it receives a, 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 an outpouring of God's anointing, a gully washing of the Holy Ghost, a, we, a toad strangling, outpouring of God. But we got to get things right. Can somebody help me preach right now? Get your life in order. Get your, get your hopes in order. Get your dreams right with God. And watch and see what God will do. Can somebody help me? Me right now. Praise God. Now I'm not supposed to officially preach, so I gotta back off a little bit here. That was just teaching, solid teaching. Uh, let me tell you what some other earthquakes. There was a a, um, a five point uh, there was another earthquake besides the 6.0 in New Zealand and a 4.2 and a bunch of other smaller ones. They also had a 5.6 there. Uh, it wasn't in Christ Church. It was another location. There was a 4.9 in Iceland, a 5.3 in Auckland, New Zealand. That was another location. A 5.0 in the Pacific Antarctic Ridge. A 4.8 in El, El Esperance Rock, New Zealand. There was a 4.5 in uh, Indonesia, 4.2 in New Zealand, 4.9 in Easter Island region, and there were several other smaller quakes, including Nevada, Oklahoma, Hawaii, Oregon, California. Um, uh, I think that was all the different states in America that at least had one or more earthquakes. This is all in the last 24 hours. There was 25 earthquakes in the last 24 hours. So there's certainly... Uh, a lot happening right now. A lot happening right now. Matter of fact, can I show you something that's happening? God bless you. How many? Robo Mama, I see that. I got a lot out of that little teaching. You, I, that's good. You know what? That's what I like to see. Because th those are spontaneous. Those are, uh, that's just a spiritual edification, if you will. It's not a completely studied out uh, message that's led by the Holy Spirit and then to be delivered in front of an audience of people. That's just off the cuff as the Holy Ghost likes to move. And I, I notice the Lord loves to do that during these uh, daily broadcasts. They're, they're periodically in it. And I've got to learn through the Holy Spirit to allow God to do that, to let it, to learn how to do those little, uh, whatever that is, uh, anointed preaching for five minutes or teaching for five to ten minutes whatever that may be, because somebody needs to hear it. Somebody's starving for the word. Somebody's hungry for the manna. Somebody is, is, is come here today saying, I need to hear from God. I know that things are getting bad, but I also, in the midst of all of that, Pastor Begley, I need to hear from God. I need, I need to get a word from the Lord. I, I need to know if I'm on the right path. I need to feel the blessed assurance. Jesus is mine. <laughs> oh, what a foretaste of his glory divine. I mean, you need that, don't you? You need that anointing. Praise God. Hey, I got something else to show you here. Thank you, my peace is Jesus. Let's go to Omaha, Nebraska. What? Here it is. Look at this sinkhole, folks. Downtown Omaha, Nebraska. Are you serious? Are you absolutely serious? That is, that is huge. That is literally huge. Downtown, it took up three lanes of traffic or three lanes of the, of the, of the street, of the road. Downtown Omaha, Nebraska. A sinkhole, a mighty sinkhole, has opened up, and it was on literally New Year's Day. This this actually happened, and uh, it um, 
it was so huge, of course, they had to shut down the roads, and uh, it kept getting bigger, and that's why I'm showing it to you. It finally finished collapsing, and that is the size of it. So things are going to get shook loose, folks. The sinkholes are not going away. Oh, by the way, speaking of weather, you got to think, you got to talk about Washington State. Folks, they're having unbelievable rainstorms, unbelievable flooding. Rivers are flooded over their banks, rock slides, landslides. Uh, I mean, just total, it's, it's just crazy up in Washington State right now. And by the way, thousands, and I mean thousands of birds have died along the coast of Washington State, Oregon, and on down, all the way down to Northern California. There are thousands of dead birds along the seashore that are just literally dead everywhere. It just keeps like, you know, just keeps like jumping, but as it goes all along the coast, especially Washington State. So there's a lot going on right now um, as far as the manifestations in the weather. Oh, and by the way, take a look at I did a video about it a couple days ago. You should look at it. There, the southern part of the sun has got a huge, massive black hole. It's because the Mag magnetosphere of the sun, its its outer protection, if you will, has got a gaping hole. And I mean, it's the whole south pole of the sun. This thing is enormous. And what can happen is it can release uh, coronal mass injections, and those uh, <clears throat> would release tons of energy, tons of UV light, radiation type light, and if it gets turned in a way that where we can receive a direct blast from the sun to the earth from that, it you know it's just less protection. It's it's just less layers between us on the surface of the earth and what's coming off the sun. So anyway, it's huge. It's huge, and um, and it's going to be like that for quite some time. It's not. It don't just reclose real quick, okay? It's a slow process of reclosing, which means it leaves the door wide open for unbelievable um, releasing of energy and or UV light that can put a ton of pressure on the earth, on the tectonic plates, which could create massive earthquakes. So this this thing, and what you know what Jesus said, which is the scriptures the Lord give me for this year. Again, Luke 21, 25, for there shall be signs in the sun and the moon and in the stars and distress of nations with perplexity and the sea and the waves roaring. Men's hearts failing for fear of things coming upon the earth for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. And, and when you begin to see these things come to pass, he says, then lift up your heads, look up. Well, first he says, all right, heaven. And then shall they see the sign of the Son of Man coming with power and great glory. And when these things begin to come to pass, he said, then lift up your heads, look up, for your redemption draweth nigh. Oh, my, my, my. Well, we can see the day approaching, can't we? Let's go to New York City, specifically the Bronx. We just buried that second police officer that was assassinated. And last night, our plane touched down in, Los An or in Indianapolis just five minutes or so before midnight. As I was getting off the plane into the terminal, there was a television screen on with CNN with breaking news. Two New York City police officers shot in the Bronx. Both men are alive and are expected to survive. And one of the two suspects was shot by the police. He ended up having to check himself in a hospital uh, from his gunshot wounds. The second suspect has just been apprehended, I guess, within the last hour, hour and a half. Uh, the manhunt was underway for these two suspects who shot and wounded two 
New York City police officers who were responding to a robbery in the Bronx, New York. Both officers were listed in stable condition. And we're going to be in the Bronx, Lord willing, in 12 days. As uh, Sunday night, January 18th, the 19th, the 20th, and the 21st, Lord willing, we'll be preaching the first four nights of the Great Gathering at Harvest Army Church International in the Bronx, New York. And we look forward to it. And we believe that, you know, we need revival in the land, certainly. We need a great shaking in the land. Oh, and we need the word. These police say that one of the suspects was wounded. The, the shooting took place at 10.30 p.m. Eastern over on 184th Street, all right? So anyway, pray for these officers. Pray for the people of New York. Pray that the violence uh, will, will, will subside, that it will stop. Pray that uh, the, the media does not continue to fan the flames of racism. Pray that, uh, uh, that there is changes that need to be made, are made as it relates to the relationship between the police officers and, the, and uh, civilians. And pray that people who are rebellious and out of control will be brought into, uh, you know, brought into order and, and start walking uh, the way they should. I understand protesting is one thing, demonstration and protest is one thing. Assassinating is another. Uh, so what we have here is uh, very, very serious situations taking place across our country. This is a very, very sad and delicate thing. But there is only one answer. Jesus. There's really only one answer giving your life to Jesus Christ. And that's what people need to know. It's what people need to do. Uh, because we're truly living in perilous times. Hmm. Let me just say this. I'm trying to get my screen back on here. Um, we are living in perilous times. And uh, we, we need each other, and we need to pray one for another, and we need to pray for our communities. Can you say amen? Praise the Lord. Folks, uh, I want to thank Nick of New York for this report. I, I don't know what to do with this report, really. I mean, other than to say, is there something here? Uh, and the reason I'm going to bring it up is because my wife, Heidi, did some extensive research on sex slavery and what's happening. Why are so many of these young women and girls disappearing and missing off the streets of our nation and around the world. She did some extensive research on this, and she came across some information that related to a private island where leaders of the world and very powerful, influential people were visiting, flying in and visiting this island where sexual activity was going on, not only being provided, if you will, through prostitution, but sex slavery itself. There were young women there that were against their will and uh, being forced into sex slavery with many very powerful and influential uh, men of different nations and walks of life. And she talked to me about this, actually, about six weeks ago, maybe two months ago. We did not go forward with the information. The names were too powerful. Um, and also, you can't, you, you know, you're not, a, <clears throat> you're not sure if, it, if it's truth or not. Well, this young lady that has come forward now, um, Virginia Roberts, uh, she is saying that she was one of these young ladies that was taken to this island and was uh, a sex slave and had been there since age 15. Uh, and she's the one that has uh, now spoken out against Prince Andrew and uh, the attorney there, who's very well known as well, Alan uh, Dershowitz, and others. And I see others here in this article I just received from Nick of New York. And I'm talking some people in some seriously high places. And I'm, I'm going to let it lay right now uh, because 
these these names are just now coming up. The reason I'm going to hit and bring up Prince Andrew and Alan Dursowich is because they have already spoken and uh, begin to defend themselves publicly. And whether they're telling the truth or not, I don't know. But uh, am I saying that there is sex slavery? Absolutely. Could this young lady be lying? Of course. Is she? I doubt it. I really doubt it. Uh, and because this type of information has already been surfacing. Let's just not, I mean, you can't sweep this stuff under the rug forever. Uh, women are being violated. Young women are being abducted. This could be your daughter, your granddaughter. And uh, so, again, those two men have already spoken out. Um, uh, there's another very powerful man. Uh, who has not spoken yet, but he, he will have to, and you'll see that soon. There's two of them. One, uh, a very powerful former leader of the world, one of the main leaders of the world at one time, and the other one, a very, very powerful, wealthy uh, gentleman also, and there's others. So we'll wait and see how this plays out. I'm just telling you that now that where there's smoke, a lot of times there's fire. I don't know who all was involved. I'm saying that certainly this private island and that there's already been reports of Saudi princes, uh, sheiks, oil tycoons, corporate CEOs, world leaders, whether they're presidents, vice presidents, uh, secretary of defense, foreign ministers, I mean, uh, people in very powerful position have been going in and out of this island where this is allegedly been going on. And now this young lady got off the island and is saying, oh, yeah, it's going on. I was there. Let me tell you. So, uh, folks, the Bible says that which is done in secret will be shouted from the housetop. Uh, there comes a time. Uh, and let me just say this. You might think this will just be blown over. It's a miracle this young lady's not dead. And it's, it's going to be a miracle if she don't die. Um, of course, if, she, if that was to happen right away, people would immediately try to figure out why and how that happened. So there could be a process involved. She's, she, you need to plead the blood of Jesus over her right now. She truly needs the blood of Jesus over her. And uh, we need to pray, okay? Uh, this type of behavior goes on and has been going on, folks, since the almost uh, since every empire, every empire, every dynasty, every pharaoh, and every king, world leaders. Are you serious? And this is when mankind thinks that he is more powerful than God, or he thinks he is a god, and that he's entitled to just take whoever he wants, whenever he wants. There are people in these positions, and I won't limit it to men. There's been wicked queens and wicked world leaders also that are women who uh, follow the same thing. They're in positions of power, and they use that power to manipulate people or to misuse people, or abuse people, or to have people killed, assassinated, or whatever. Uh, and a lot of times, it's for their filthy pleasure. And you won't hear this preached much, other than it's in the Word of God. In the book of Jude, it talks about filthy dreamers, brute beast, without natural affection. All right? I mean, we can go to the Word on this, where people are literally performing uh, satanic rituals. There's a situation that's happened uh, out there in California just as we were getting ready to leave. A couple was killed. Somebody went into their house, murdered both mom and dad, and took the infant baby. Now, two days later, the infant baby was found dead in a dumpster. Uh, and it had been uh, brutally killed. So the first thing I would say is, what Russ Dizdar has been saying. These satanic cults 
want to get a hold of infant babies, want to do child sacrifices unto the wickedness of the devil himself. This is what the Illuminati, this is where they get their power. Go in, kill the parents, take the baby, and sacrifice it, maybe. I mean, I don't know. But if you don't know that these things, or if you're blinded, and you refuse to accept the fact this is going on, then, uh, you know, you don't even know how to structure your prayers. You have to start praying over your city to break those principalities and powers. you got to start praying in agreement and pleading the blood of Jesus over your neighborhood, over your community, over your own house and family. Look, the devil's like a roaring lion. He's seeking who he may devour out there. He's not playing games, are you? He's playing for keeps. He's looking to kill, still destroy. Jesus said, I've come to give you life and give it to you more abundantly, but we're going to need to start confessing our blessings. We're going to need to start praying for divine protection. We're going to have to start standing on the word of God. God's going to shake this thing. He's about ready to shake this thing. Somebody help me. America, he's going to shake you. England, Europe, especially Britain, he's going to shake you. Germany, he's going to shake you. Russia, he's going to shake you. Middle East, the whole Middle East, he's going to shake every one of you. He's going to shake some things. That is good coffee. Oh, I want to thank uh, some really wonderful research here. Stephen of Oklahoma, thank you. How oil prices are slumping. Now, if you guys watched my video, I think yesterday or the day before, I did one about who is now the king of the world of oil. The United States of America is now the largest producer of oil in the world. We are number one. We're now producing more oil than Saudi Arabia. We're producing 12 million barrels a day. We're exporting 1 million barrels a day. 1 million. Why are, how are we doing it? We're doing it through fracking. With a new technology of drilling, we have created a way to produce and refine gasoline and a, a, an exponential growth in the last six months because the Congress lifted restrictions on uh, certain codes of the fracking industry. America has literally become the oil capital of the world. And because of the United States' unbelievable production of oil, the price of oil has plummeted all over the earth. And it is killing the Middle Eastern Muslim monarchies. These Muslim kings who've lived literally wealth, like kings, is not even close. I mean, they've been living literally unbelievable. Their people don't, but they have. Their kingdoms. They've been living off this money, high amounts. Now, America, the reason the price of oil fell is not because of green energy. It's not because you drive a hybrid. It's not because we gave $2.8 trillion in a stimulus package to create uh, phony baloney uh, factories making solar panels that went broke in 18 months. It's not because of the windmills that are blowing out in the fields or some kind of, you know, it's not the solar panels and it's not the windmills. It's the fracking and the production of oil. That's driving the prices down. And uh, a lot of uh, people got rich in the first two years of the Obama administration coming to the White House off this fakey green energy uh, uh, approach. But the real money is now being made because the oil industry has been turned loose. Now, here's the next thing you need to know. When the rest of the restrictions are lifted, when people are starting will be allowed to really drill the oil in places of Alaska and in other parts of America where they've been heavily restricted, you're going to see an outpouring of production of oil like you've never seen. You're also going to see that pipeline from Canada to New Orleans, which is going to then 
cut down the supply line and really allow America to, to uh, begin to export. Tanya from West Virginia says, Pastor, yeah, they're, they're going to start fracking for gas where I live in Bluefield, West Virginia. Yeah, it, it, it's going to create, and I'll tell you what's going to do. It's going to create a massive amount of jobs. It's going to put America, it, but it is going to drop the price of oil down, which means these rich Middle Eastern Muslim monarchies are not going to have the cash that they've been having to fund their lavish lifestyles and their weapons to attack Israel. Be honest with you. The production, oh, and by the way, the America is now selling its oil to the European Union nations at cheaper prices than they can buy it from Russia and the pipeline through Ukraine. So this is going to affect Russia's oil prices, which is going to stop their ability to make tons of money. It's also going to affect Iran's ability to sell oil because they can't produce it as quickly. And so, and oh, by the way, the price of gasoline, it will fall, folks, to below $1.50 a gallon. It may get down as low as $1.20 a gallon by midsummer. You're going, and that's going to fuel a revel, a, a literally an economic revolution in America. It's if we can get the rest of the industries of America to start dropping prices on food and start being more competitive, you're going to actually see a turnaround that could be a phenomenal turnaround in America and in Canada and in the European nations would all prosper by this production. You've got to ask yourself, how can this be? Well, think about it. How could it work if all the Middle Eastern nations produced oil, charge an arm and a leg for every drop we get, and hold America and Europe hostage over oil, which is what's been going on for about 25 years. OPEC has been strangling America, and it's not just OPEC. It's some of the left-wing liberals in America who've also helped put the squeeze on industry in America in the name of Mother Earth worship. But now we might be getting ready to see a change. We're getting ready to see a production swing. And right now, what will America do with its money? What will it do with its surplus? Will it relieve the people or will it use it for craziness to build colonies on Mars and the moon? To build more bunkers under the Rocky Mountains in Denver? Will it use it for more lavish uh, lifestyles of the 1%? Or will it invest in its infrastructure? Will it invest in its people? Will it invest in its jobs? Will it cut back taxes? Will it help fuel an economy? I mean, my Lord, if there was ever a time that somebody was running for president of the United States would have a golden opportunity to put America to the top of the charts in every area, it's right now. I've never seen such an opportunity in my life. It is incredible what could be done. And also, while America would flourish, so would Europe. And the allied nations would Flourish together. And oh, by the way, so would Israel, because Israel's sitting on a pot of gold of oil. And America could then secure their borders, tell all of the haters to go away, make sure they go away, and help Israel then drill for its own oil to also produce and be prosperous. This could be done. But will it be done? Or will the New World Order step in? and use this newfound fortune to supply all the resources only for the elite and leave the rest of the 99% wallowing in their misery. This is something we're going to have to see. There's a lot on the table right here. So when uh, now I'm starting to get a picture. The Lord s spoke to me in prayer a few months ago, back in the summer, and said to me, Paul, in the year 2016, America is going to have to make a major choice. They're either going to choose to stay one nation under God, or they're going to take the other road. And this decision will determine the prosperity and the pers and, and the and the literally the freedoms of this great nation. It is a crossroad. 
And it was, and, and when the Lord brought it to me, I still don't know what that decision is. I don't know if it is, are they going to vote whether or not to divide Israel, a two-state solution by force, by mandate? Or is it has something to do with uh, a Supreme Court decision that may be coming up that could affect the moral standards of this nation? Um, uh, I mean, there's a crossroad. The Lord showed me a crossroad. And one was definitely, if they choose the right road, it'll be one nation under God and it will prosper and flourish. But if they take the left road, it will be a nation divided, a nation that will forget God, reject God, and will be a nation sliding in a very negative direction. So this is a, a, a I don't know what the decision is, but I do know it's coming. And so church, do we, is there anything we can do about it? Pray, pray, pray. Do you believe in the power of prayer? Then start doing it now. Start praying for America. Really, start praying. Don't be political. Become a prayer warrior. Be prophetical. Get, get in the prophetic. Get in the anointing. Start claiming that God's miracle for all of... Uh, look, in whatever nation you are that listen to me on the Worldwide Network, whatever nation you're in, pray that righteous leaders lead your nation. Whether you're in uh, Russia, whether you're in Africa, whether you're in Asia, whether you're in the Middle East right now, start praying for righteous leadership, righteous leadership in your nation. Pray for it. Start praying. Start trusting God. Ask God to help, to intervene. Watch and see what God can do. God can make a way where there seems to be no way. Can somebody help me today? Amen. Anyway, uh, this is going to be very, very, very precarious times. Uh, times like we've not seen probably since the end of World War II. We are at a crossroads and we need to pray. We need to pray. And if this nation remains free, freedom of speech, freedom to assemble, freedom to uh, express ourselves, if the, right now, did you know that the Obama administration was trying to change regulations on the internet to really put some clamping down? And David Cameron of the UK wants this, wants it even more regulations than even the Obama administration. But I just seen where the the Congress, I just seen where the uh, in the House that there is uh, quite a few in the house that are standing up against this move and are saying, oh no, you can't start trying to regulate the net. You can't start trying to uh, 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 put put a squeeze on the not only the freedom of speech, but the freedom to do business on the net. So there's a lot going on right now, folks. Again, pray like you've never prayed before. Pray for those who are in authority, whether you agree with everything they do or not. Pray that they make righteous decisions when it comes to the to, to the media. We do not need the, the United States government regulating. We don't need David Cameron regulating the internet in all of the UK. Or how about this? He wants it for the whole European Union. We don't need the New World Order to try to put a squeeze on our voice. We must have a voice. We must use our voice to speak the truth and to stand on the word of the Lord, to get the gospel to a world that's hurting, a gospel that is lost. Um, okay, yeah, there's going to be a fight. Thank you, Tina. Uh, there is going to be a fight in the in the House of Representatives. Of course, the Republicans are now the majority. They've they've they're they've been the majority in the House for some time now, and now they've taken over the Senate. Uh, but in the House, there are some of the uh, Republicans who are wanting to go ahead and remove um, Mr. Boyer from Ohio uh, and put a new leader in, a new leader, because they feel that uh, John is just too, uh, you know, from the, what's called the establishment. Uh, and they want somebody in there that is going to be a little bit more gun ho I think, to help make the right Type some decision. Now, if he wins, which he probably will, then he'll turn around and try to throw the hammer on top of those that tried to remove him from power. So you're going to see some power struggling going on, and uh, that's just part of what they do. 
in Washington. That's partly why nothing ever gets done. Because they're more worried about their jobs than your job. Is anybody going to... Can I get an amen on that one? I mean, if think about it. If they were more worried about your job than their job, then this nation would literally flourish. But I just gave you a rundown of how it could. There's a golden, golden opportunity to turn the thing around. But it it will require a righteous decisions. Not greed. Not because some uh, slick-haired, shiny-toed lobbyist who strolls through the halls of Congress just filled your back pocket for your votes on the floor. I mean, we need some statesmen. We need some people in there. We need some, literally, some people who operate in, and we have some, by the way. There is some. But we need it, We need this thing to change. We need a cultural change. Can you say amen? I want to welcome everybody that's here. We've only got about 25 minutes to go. Let me finish up with what else is going on right now. Uh, I apologize that we only had an hour and a half today. Uh, but uh, we, we, we're just glad we're here. We didn't get run over by the semis. And, uh, we, and we had safe travel, and we're happy to be back home in Indiana. And I truly do uh, miss being home. Uh, let me just say this the Dow Jones. Uh, Larry from West Virginia, are you out there? Can you tell us what's the Dow doing right now? Uh, I have a chart right here. This was at uh, a, little, a little after 12 noon. This was what the Dow was doing. It had fallen 170, 164 points. And um, in, in a matter of three hours, it had fallen 449 points in uh, the last two days. It's right now down 138. All right. So, yester so yesterday, way down. Today, falling still. Uh, and uh, there may not be any. Uh, and, and here's the thing. Listen to the lies of the media. I'm going to tell you one lie they're going to tell. I'm going to tell you exactly the biggest lie they could ever tell you. I'm not an economic financial guru by no stretch of the imagination. But I can tell you for sure this is a bold face lie. Here it goes. They're going to start telling you on the news that the oil prices falling is what's causing the Dow Jones to fall. They're going to start telling you that, be, that these oil prices falling down is hurting the stock market. Folks, that is the biggest lie from the smoky pits of hell that you could ever tell. The oil prices has nothing. Literally, there is a few futures um, on the big board. There is some energy companies on the big board, but not enough to swing the Dow. Tech, but... Tech companies are the are the main area of where the Dow runs, not the oil price. The oil prices is, is not going to affect the, the uh, Wall Street to fall. Wall Street has already been too high. It's been built on a facade. It's not been real anyway. So the price of oil will fuel the real jobs in mainstream America. The Wall Street, I don't care if it went to, what does Wall Street do for you? 17000 what's it doing for you? 18,000, what's it doing for you? If it goes to 19,000, what's that doing for you? If it goes to 25,000, what does it do for you? Does it put food on your table? Does it get you a job? Do you get a promotion because of it? Are the prices cheaper at the store because of it? No, but if the price of gasoline falls less than a buck 50 across this country, and if America continues to pump out the oil and outproduce the Saudis, Wall Street has nothing to do with the average American. It only is a game. It's a high rollers game for the 1%. It's a, it's a fancy casino for the 1% at your expense. Because if any of them ever get in trouble, then they, of course, they're too big to fail. And you will see them reach deep, 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 deep into your back pocket to make sure that they're bailed out. Oh, is anybody, I, I don't want to go there. I've got too much to talk about. I'm just trying to tell you, this thing is getting uglier by the minute. I'm going to say this real quick. Let's go to Jerusalem. Uh, Benjamin Netanyahu is standing up for his soldiers. 
And God bless him, he should. Shalom, shalom. Uh, the Palestinians are attempting to drag the Israeli Defense Force soldiers into an international court at The Hague and to have them tried for war crimes. Uh, but Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu said uh, Sunday he vowed to deny any Palestinian efforts to drag the IDF soldiers and commanders to the International Criminal Court in The Hague. The Palestinian Authority has chosen confrontation with the State of Israel, said Benjamin Netanyahu, and we will not sit with a folded hands. Netanyahu said at the start of the weekly cabinet meeting in Jerusalem, those who need, those who need to answer before a criminal court are the heads of the Palestinian Authority who have forged an alliance of war with the criminals of Hamas. Amen. The IDF soldiers will continue to defend the state of Israel with determination and might, the premier said, just as they defended us. We will protect them with the same determination and the same might. Amen and amen. And that's crazy. But folks, the world is salivating. Leaders of the world are salivating to take down Israel. They have come together. They've come, go to right now, Psalms 83. Here's exactly what they're doing. Uh, exactly. I met a wonderful couple at the coffee Saturday. <clears throat> She uh, she is an Israeli. He married her. He's the, both Jewish. She was an Israeli. She is an Israeli citizen, but the, and moved from Israel to America right now. He's an American, a Jewish man. They've married. They were at the they were at the uh, brecht at the coffee Saturday afternoon. Beautiful people, beautiful people, and love the Lord, and understand. Uh, English and Arabic, excuse me, Hebrew. I said Arabic, I meant Hebrew. Uh, and uh, love our ministry, love that we stand up for the word uh, because so many times Israel gets uh, pushed around uh, by some in Christianity. Let me read Psalms 83. Here's what the word says. Keep not thou silence, O God. Hold not thy peace and be not still, O God. For lo, thy enemies make a turmoil, and they that hate thee have lifted up the head. They've taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulted against thy hidden ones. They have said, come, let us cut them off from being a nation, that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. For they have consulted together with one consent. They are confederate against thee. This prophecy in a psalm, Psalms 83, by King David, prophesying of the, literally, of exactly what's going on right now. And I, I'm telling you, in 2015, we're coming up on blood moon number three. And, uh, at Passover, and there's no question, this year, 2015, will be maybe the most prophetic year that we have ever had since we've been alive. Some of you are older, maybe have, were alive during 1948, and remember 48, Israel becoming a nation, maybe you remember the Six-Day War and the reunification of Jerusalem in 67, maybe you remember the War of Yom Kippur, a Day of Atonement War on 1973. Uh, maybe you were alive on 9-11 uh, uh, and the tremendous events that have come after that. Maybe you remember Desert Storm Maybe you in 91. Maybe you remember uh, the Iraqi invasion and the invasion of Afghanistan. Maybe you do remember the Vietnam War. Maybe some of you were alive during the Korean War. There's been a lot of major events. But I'm telling you, 2015 is a year that is, is literally the potentials of the prophetic of taking place is I, the, 
literally, uh, we're going to watch it very close. This is a, an unbelievable time. Israel, I believe, will, will face its toughest challenge ever. It will have to defend its borders. I think maybe they'll have to do it in every aspect of it. They'll have to defend their borders from invaders. They'll have to defend their borders at the United Nations. They'll have to defend their borders among their allies. And they may even have to defend their borders in division in their own Knesset. Enemies in the camp. I'm telling you, it is a very prophetic year. And uh, we're watching these things take place. And we're praying to God. And I don't know the day nor the hour that the Son of Man cometh, but I know He's coming. Matter of fact, He's coming in an hour you think not the Son of Man cometh. Watch and pray. Men ought to pray, and that without ceasing. But Jesus also said, watch and pray. For an hour you think not the Son of Man cometh. For you can see that it's sort of like a fig tree when it's shaken by an untimely wind, and it, and it, and it shakes loose these fig, figs. And uh, it says, this is what's happening. We're seeing, you can, one place Jesus said, you can see the leaves on the trees. You know summer is nigh. But you can't discern the signs of the times. You can't see what's going on. They couldn't understand it the first time the Messiah came, and the world doesn't understand it the second time the Messiah is coming. But he is coming. Here's a term you hardly ever hear anymore. The second coming of Christ. It's like you don't even hear it. It's like they erased it from the, <laughs> the Bible. It's like they erased it from the theology. It's, it's like they erased it from the gospel. But I'm not going to erase it. It's there. He is coming back. But did you know that there are ministers right now in several different denominations of America who are preaching Jesus isn't literally coming back? That, uh, that, the, but still, his principles, his teaching uh, is a good place to start. It's a good reference point to help get, gauge your life. They're already starting to preach that there is no resurrection of the dead. There is no second coming of Christ. They're already doing it, folks. I've heard them preach it on television. They're saying that this is just a figure of imagination. This is not a literal event that will take place. I'm here to tell you right now. These are scoffers and mockers. They're doing the same thing they did in Noah's day when they said that it was never going to rain and Noah was building the ark. Oh, by the way, I got to tell you something. I did a video on this yesterday, just before I left uh, to get on the plane in, in San Diego. And that is this tomb, this tomb they found, two tombs. They found the tomb of one of the queens of Pharaoh, uh, but then they found a tomb of the mythical god, Orisus, Orias, I think is how you say it, Orias. And Orias was the god of the dead. He's the god of the dead. They found the tomb for him. And inside it were demons holding knives protecting him. Also, there was other uh, document or manuscripts or different types of things, which I doubt anybody's ever going to share with us. There were this, but you have to understand, this was the God of the underworld. They're opening the portals of hell, folks. The reason these things are being found is you're in the last days. And oh, by the way, guess who Arias was married to? Isis. She... This is what I'm saying. These are the same old devils, the same old demons being brought back out. One last opening of the gates of hell. And oh, by the way, you're seeing these as this is being done. Can I tell you what really blew my mind? I got thinking about it. Now, Orias and this queen they found for the pharaoh. This queen they found for the pharaoh was during the fifth dynasty, which is from the year 2994 BC to 2345 BC. So 2994, 2345. That is known as the fifth dynasty. Now, do you know what year Noah was born? Noah was born in the year 
2994, the very beginning of the fifth dynasty. Um, the flood came uh, in the year 24, 2344, all right? So, Basically, Noah's <laughs> lifetime was involved uh, with the giants in the land, the Nephilims, the hybrids, 13 foot tall, giants, fallen angels, hybrids, DNA altered by Satan himself. So Noah was around the whole fifth dynasty when these Tribes of demons were on the earth. So the, that's part of the reason the world was filled with violence. This is part of what was going on. This tomb has been recovered. This tomb was open. This portal has been opened. You might say it means nothing. It's just a tomb. I'm telling you, the Bible tells you in Revelation that the key to the bottomless pit, that an angel would come and open the bottomless pit and the demons of hell will cry, come out, including Apollyon and, a, and Abaddon. So we are living, and that's the God of the dead. Are you saved? And you know, the book of the dead in the Egyptians, the book of the dead is considered the most evil, satanic, sorcerous, witchcraft, spell, wicked. It is the true, I mean, not true. It is Satan's attempt. It is the most evil book ever written, the book of the dead. And what I'm telling you is they've opened the tomb of the God of the dead. They've opened a portal. And we're going to see things happening that we haven't seen before. Manifestations of demon spirits and people going completely insane, committing acts of violence and ritual satanic uh, activity will increase. Demon possession will increase. Wickedness in high places will increase. So this, let's not run away from that fact. That's going to happen. But here's the good news. Same time, God said, I'm going to open the windows of heaven. All right, so they're opening the, the doors of hell. God's opening the windows of heaven. God said, I'm going to pour out the rain, the former rain and the latter rain in the first month. I'm going to pour out the rain. I'm going to open the windows of heaven. I'm going to pour out the power of the Holy Ghost. Your sons and daughters are going to prophesy. Old men will dream dreams. Young men will see visions. On my handmaidens and servants, I will pour out my spirit. Thus saith the Lord. I'm telling you right now, God is getting ready to pour out a blessing upon the body of Christ. The portals of hell might be opened, but the gates of hell cannot prevail against the church. Jesus said it himself. And so we have nothing to fear. Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. You're a conqueror. You're more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus, the righteous. You are the head and not the tail. You're above and not beneath. You're blessed going in, blessed going out, blessed in the city, blessed in the field. Put whatever you put your hand to. My God, it'll prosper. If you've been down, if you start, blessed is a man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in that law he doth meditate day and night. He's like a tree planted by the rivers of water. His leaves will not wither. <laughs> and whatever he puts his hand to, I said, whatever he puts his hands to, it shall prosper. Can somebody help me right now? But the ungodly are not so. Mm-mm. They're like the chaff, driven by the wind. Are you rooted and grounded near the river of life? Or are you just being tossed around by the wind, living a reactionary life? A lot of folks just live their life reacting to whatever's happening around them. I don't get up in the morning and say, well, I'm going to, you know. The world does not dictate my schedule. The world does not dictate my direction. I don't, no, 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 no. My footsteps are ordered 
by the Lord. And so things may happen, but hey, this is where I'm at. I'm in the world, but I'm not of the world, okay? I'm walking in the light as he's in the light. Can somebody help me? So in other words, you want to have the mind of Christ. You want to be led by the word of the Lord. Am I helping anybody today? Am I helping anybody today? I'm going to ask you a question. Would you like to give your life to Jesus Christ? The altar is wide open. There are people are piling into these chat rooms, and I think there's somebody listening to me. I know there is somebody who's on the wrong path, somebody who's not in control of their own life, somebody who the devil's tossing you like a ship in the open sea. The waves are getting higher. The rain is coming down. The ship is torn and the sail is torn and the ship is battered and you need a captain to help you find the shore. Look, listen, listen to what I'm telling you. Let Jesus Christ in the ship. Turn your life over to him. Let him help you. Let him guide you. Let him lead you into, into, uh, uh, into green pastures. Let him take you down to the still waters. Let him restore your soul. Why don't you do this right now? I'm going to play a song. Should have had the song ready, but I didn't. I'm going to play a song, and if you'd like to be saved, if you would like to be saved, type in one of these chat rooms, I want to be saved. I want to be saved. All right, and we will pray with you. We will pray, and we believe God will touch you we believe the Lord will save you and, and, and change your life. We will pray. And there are Christian people here right now. I mean, wonderful folks that love the Lord. And they will pray as well. Why don't you come run into the mercy seat? Come run into the cross. Come to Jesus Christ. He will save you and forgive you. New live stream, there may be somebody there. Is there somebody named Shannon that wants to be saved? Oh, praise God. Shannon, 1978. That is beautiful. God bless you, Shannon. That is so, so awesome. There's somebody else. There's more people. If you're, if you're an old live stream or new live stream, I'm going to, give me a second here. I'm going to go past the three o'clock hour just a little. Hang on just a moment. I think I can. I might lose Blog Talk Radio though. Johnny wants to be saved. Oh, praise God, Johnny. There's more. Run. Come on, run to the mercy seat. Shannon wants to be saved. Johnny wants to be saved. Are you living where hope has not been? Lost in a curse of a lifetime of sin. Oh, come on, let's come to Jesus. Come on, you can do it right now. Go run into Jesus. People are saying, I repent. Lori, uh, Lauren wants to be saved. Lauren wants to be saved. Oh, praise God. Shannon wants to be saved. Johnny wants to be saved. Lauren wants to be saved. There's more out there, folks. There's more. Lauren Chabot at New Life Street. Oh, praise God. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you guys. They're coming. Those of you listening on Blog Talk Radio, those of you on the Worldwide Network, those of you watching this on archives, listening on your iPhones, 
your cell phones. You get ready to pray with me, all right? It's, get saved today. Let's get this thing right. You don't want to be left behind. 60 seconds. Those of you on Blog Talk Radio, just don't hang up your phone. We'll go past the 3 o'clock hour, but you'll still be able to hear me. I believe. I believe you will. So stay with me. We're going to pray. Our Heavenly Father, we come to you right now. I want to be saved. I want to be born again. I want to be washed in the blood. I accept Jesus Christ as my Savior. I repent of my sins. And I'm calling upon the name of the Lord. And I'm saying, Jesus, forgive me. Save me. Cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Because I believe that Jesus is the Son of God. I believe He died on the cross. I believe He rose from the dead. And I believe He ascended into heaven. I believe He's coming back again. Right now, I am saved. Saved. I am saved. I am healed. I am delivered. I am set free. I am born again. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Son. In the name of the Holy Ghost, I am free. I am saved, saved, saved in Jesus' precious name. Somebody else, Scott, also getting saved. God bless you, Scott. I believe there's still others. I'm going to wait just a minute. Shannon just gave their life to the Lord. Johnny just got saved. Lauren Chabot just got saved. Scott just got saved. Oh, praise God. And I think there's several other people out here around the world on different websites streaming with us and Blog Talk Radio and Worldwide Network and uh, archives. Archives on Blog Talk. Archives on new live stream. People on cell phones, iPhones, Androids. Are you serious? There's a movement of God. There's, there's something supernatural taking place. In the name of Jesus, we are saved by grace. Through faith, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son in the world to condemn the world, but the world through him might be saved. Are you serious? Are you serious? Folks, give the Lord some praise right now. Welcome Shannon and Johnny and Lauren Chabot and Scott. Welcome all of those four plus many more who just prayed with me. Maybe on VMI satellite television or, or Roku satellite TV. Folks, just praise God. Just welcome. Welcome to the family of God. Every one of you. Your names have just been written in the Lamb's Book of Life. We believe that by faith, because for by grace are you saved through faith. It's not in ourselves. It's a gift of God. Not of works, least any man should boast. Pastor Begley did not save you. Pastor Begley can't save anybody. Pastor Begley was saved by grace through faith in Jesus Christ. But because of what Jesus did at the cross, and that our heroes from the dead, we are born again, and we're brothers and sisters in Christ. I'm running to the mercy seat. Now I want to encourage every one of you who got saved today to go to a church, find a pastor, find a church somewhere in your town, your city, your state, your country, wherever it is you live. Tell them you just got saved and you just and you want to get baptized in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ and receive that a resurrection power. Praise God, you've already been washed in the blood. And the Bible says, you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Oh my, you need that. You need the baptism of the Holy Ghost, fire of God. You need to receive it, that you might have power to walk all over the devil's head and prepare and continue on your path to glory. Your names have just been written in the Lamb's Book of Life, and you are saved. If the Lord should come back, before I can close this broadcast, I will meet you by faith. I'll meet you down the golden streets of glory. And we'll praise the Lord forever and evermore. Can somebody say amen? 
If you need a Bible, we would love to send you one. They're free of charge. Miss CD, we'll put it up there right now for you. Just send an email to MissZD01 at Hotmail.com. That's MissZD01 at Hotmail.com. That's MissZD01 at Hotmail.com. And title that email, I Need a Bible, or I Need a Prayer Cloth. And we will get those in the mail to you. Give us your full name address, zip code, what country you're from, and we will get those in the mail. They are free. We'll pay the postage, and we'll give them to you no matter where you are in the world. We shipped over 1,800 Bibles last year, and we just, just, just praise God that the body of Christ can do such great work in the kingdom of the Lord. And the reason we can do it is because of our faithful partners, our brothers and sisters in Christ, our online church, those that are uh, just love and just those who want to contribute to the ministry, it's because of their faithfulness. God's able to do the work. Can you say amen? Praise God. Amen. Wow. Well, I'm sorry we were late, but I'm sure glad we're still just on time. Can you say amen? Don't miss up. Uh, Virginia Governor McDonald has just been sentenced, according to Russia Today. We'll check that out. Folks, God bless you. Have a great afternoon and evening. I'm home now, so tomorrow my schedule will really get back on track with the YouTube videos. And Lord willing, a three-hour broadcast starting at 12 noon Eastern right here on the coming apocalypse. God bless all of you, all right? Be blessed in Jesus' precious name. God bless you all. We love you. Amen. Wow. What a great time today. Thank you for using Blog Talk Radio. Goodbye. Praise God. PBTV 24-7 will be on in just a few minutes. Heart as for me, you're the glory.